look, you want to build muscle, but you're struggling, the odds are you're not doing one of these top five yet unpopular strength training exercises, but you need to do them. Check this out. Ooh, I like this. Yes. Mm. I, so, love, I love this What's crazy? Okay, so what's interesting about this, because you guys can see the list. You guys see what the exercises are. Like, these are exceptionally good muscle building exercises, but for a number of reasons, they're just unpopular. Um, so let's let's start with the first one. And I don't know why I don't see more people doing this one. It's more popular than it used to be, but still, I don't see enough people doing it. It's because it's uncomfortable. It's hard. hard. It, front squats. <laughs> yeah. think, front squats. Think, it, it, like the only exercise that builds your legs better than front squats are back squats. Front, yeah. front, front right there. Front 100%. squats are the incline bench press to bench press. Yes. It's just like that. Yes. Everybody does barbell back squats. If they, if they squat. I mean, first you need to squat, but some people don't even do that. But if you're squatting... You typically ignore front squats. Why? Because you suck at them there. You can't normally They're do hard. anywhere near the same weight as you can backload. So you just backload squats all the time. I feel the exact same issue is with incline bench press. People can do more weight on incline bench press or on flat bench. So they neglect incline bench press. And those movements are just so good. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, holding it in either a rack position or even yes. the cross hand position. The wrist is mobility is a huge deterrent. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, it, you know, you can. You can use different variations of that with our crossed arm position. Crossed and, arm, use towels. Yeah, you can, you can even do like uh, uh, in the crooks of your arm, which is, I forget what that's Zercher, called. Zercher. Zercher. Uh, so yeah, there's other options for that, but it's such a valuable exercise. Oh my God, it builds muscle like yeah, crazy. I want to say this. Look, if you think back to when you first learned how to back squat, it also felt awkward. It probably hurt your neck and you couldn't hold it properly, but then <clears throat> you learn the technique and you're able to position it properly and now you're comfortable doing it. Okay, front squats are the same thing. If you've never done them or you haven't done them consistently, holding them on your shoulders, even with the crossed hand position, that's how I do them, it takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, you get comfortable and then you can load these. Like you can really get strong with front squats. Now, I do want to say this. If you do front squats every once in a great while, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, do yeah. them consistently as a staple exercise and you will see new gains in particular in your quads. Mm -hmm. Like this is a, this back, by the way, back in the day before hack squat machines and all that stuff, this was the front, this was the quad exercise. This is what bodybuilders did to develop big quads. It was back squats and then front squats. Yep. Um, and again, they're exceptional. They, they require you to stand more upright. So you're going to get more quad involvement, keep your elbows high as you go down and get good at them. So practice the movement till you get good at them. But then if you could squat 315, you'll get up to the point where you can get pretty close with the front squat. The, be the best my legs ever looked. Yeah. Also the best my chest ever looked. Same thing. I set a goal to get my incline press as good as my flat bench. And when I got really close to that was the best my chest ever looked. When my legs, the best my legs ever looked was when I set a goal to get my front squat as strong as my back yes. squat. Mm -hmm. And I never passed them, right? I never got a front squat bigger than my back squat, but I got close. Yeah. I was I was front squatting over 315 and I was working out with 405 on the back squat at that time. That's pretty good weight on the front squat. At least it was for me. And then on the incline bench, same thing. I got really close to my flat bench press, and that was the most developed my chest and my legs ever looked was setting that goal. I think people, too, they don't realize that that's sort of like it unlocks a whole nother potential for a lot of different moves, especially in the Olympic lifting realm yeah. uh, with power cleans, with snatch, with, you know, a push press even just, you know, there's, there, it translates really well to that. Now we're strong in that rack position. Uh, and two, like, you know, you're really utilizing that strength in your quads and, 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 you know, getting proficient in that anterior strength, which we we're so focused on posterior strength, which I get it. Cause we, we do everything kind of in yeah. front of us, but like, you know, it, what's the alternative to building your quads? Like what's better than a front squat? Yeah. Nothing. Well, and not only that, it's, it's arguably way more functional and practical. Yeah, because right. typically if you squat down with something in the real world, you're holding it. Yeah, yeah. You, if yeah. you pick up, if you pick up with your buddy the couches, to, the couch yeah. to move, you don't do it on your back. You know, you you front squat it. And For lift a second, it up, I thought you said if you pick up your buddy, <laughs> <laughs> like, if you pick me up, it's gonna be a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there, Adam? I'm front squatting with Justin. Yeah. All right, front squats next, is number one. Next, that's when he feels like he wants to PR. Next, any weighted walking movement, so like a farmer walk or a suitcase carry or a rack carry. Like heavy carry. Now, here's why they're not popular because it doesn't fit nicely into a body part split, right? What day do I do heavy 
walks. Do I do it on yeah. back day? Do I do it on leg day? Do I do it on core day? Do I do it with like I'm just oh my training God. my hands? When I get those questions, I'm like, I, I just left the building. Yeah. <laughs> so now these are exceptional muscle builders because of the amount of tension that they can create and the weight that you can lift. At one point, I remember, and it was because uh, our program Map Strong. Map Strong is one of the programs that we have where it's, it's programmed in regularly, right? Because it's a strongman inspired workout program. Mm -hmm. And I started doing heavy farmer uh, walks with a trap bar. Um, now, at this time, I could probably deadlift around five, I think around 550, 545 at that time. And I got to the point where I was doing 450 pounds on the trap bar, holding it and walking for 50 yards. And my traps, my back, and my bicep screw. Mm -hmm. All from that ridiculous tension yeah. mm -hmm. from holding that weight. And then you want to talk about core stability. Like mm -hmm. I felt like you could not hurt my core no matter what you did. Uh, but everybody thinks of this as like a, a grip exercise or a hand exercise, which it is, but it trains the whole body and it creates such crazy central nervous system activation of the entire so body. So that's how I look at it like this. And I, and I love to uh, harken back to the first time you talked about the analogy of the CNS and muscles and how it's like a speak a speaker and an amplifier. And so when you are doing exercises, you are considering that, okay, like I also want to build my CNS. I want to invest in having a more powerful CNS. Those exercises are incredible for yeah. that. So if you yeah. never prioritize a program or routine or a day of lifting around, hey, let's do some things that are going to really challenge the CNS. That's an example of integrating that. I think it's obvious for uh, strong men, power lifters. I think this is a staple uh, exercise or movement. It's uh, it's funny that it's not in the in the bodybuilding world. Yeah, in the bodybuilding world, because of the point you bring up is like, well, what am I working? Yes, is this a, yeah. is this a they don't trap? really consider work capacity. Yeah, and but yet it has so much carryover. If you invest in that amplifier, that is going to carry over into all your you know bodybuilding exercises later on. Because well, so they're muscle motivated, right? In terms of like instead of movement focus, like which I think that's probably why it's adopted more by you know, your strongman competitors, your power lifters and such, because, you know, they're very much more of like trying to, you know, improve that, that overall technique and, and efficiency of moving the barbell yeah. where you want it and moving. Uh, and, and this is, this is a local motion exercise. This is something where too, it's going to provide all these variables of instability where you're going to get challenged very directly, laterally, uh, you know, rotationally, and you have to adjust and you have to stay strong and you have to stay solid. And I'm going to say this. Okay. So, where do we fit this? Probably leg day or back day if you have a split. But here's what you're going to notice by progressively overloading this. So if you're not doing this regularly, this is also an advantage because as you start doing it, you're going to see those newbie strength gains. And as you get stronger, here's where you're going to notice the gains. Forearms, biceps, and back, and probably core as well. That's where you actually see muscle growth. So mm -hmm. consider that, try it, and do it for like six to eight weeks in a row of right. getting stronger at it and tell me you didn't develop uh, more muscle or build more muscle from it. All right, next up, I don't, I, I honestly don't understand why I don't see more of this exercise. It just doesn't make sense to me because it fits in body part workouts. It's well known. I don't know why. The only reason why I think people don't do this is because it's on a flat bench and people don't want to use less than they normally can. But I'm talking about the close grip bench press. I just, I almost never see people doing close grip bench presses for triceps. And I don't yeah. understand why. It's a favorite favorite movement of mine. I claim this to be the movement that put the most mass on my arms was this exercise. I actually prefer it on an incline bench. Um, I just think it's more comfortable, that that position. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be done on an incline or a, or a flat. But it is absolutely a forgotten, unused exercise. It's very rare that I walk in a gym and I see this, yet it should be a movement that you see. When you think about the obvious top five that we always talk about, those you see those in the gym. You'll never yeah. go in the gym and not see somebody squatting, somebody deadlifting, mm -hmm. somebody bench pressing, somebody rowing. I mean, that's for sure you're going to see those movements, right? But the ones that we're listening today- uh, You just you, rarely see them. You rarely do or see Or you them. rarely see them programmed. And yet, yeah. if, if you think about them as uh, you know, right outside the top five, so this would be considered top 10, top 20 exercises for sure, you should see it in every workout. Somebody doing it, yes. especially in a commercial gym, yet you don't. And so, and especially with the ability to load at a substantial amount more. Totally. You know, like those exercises are always more valuable because, you know, now you're you're going to challenge that that extra bit of a louder signal, which, you know, will go directly towards your desired outcome. Here, try this. For, for the next six weeks, replace your first tricep exercise with close grip bench press and get stronger at it. And then 
Tell me you don't see significant gains. In for sure you will. Yeah. You will for sure. And that, that uh, I brought this up the last time we brought about uh, talked about close grip bench press is the carryover to your bench press, which everybody loves that, right? Sure. Everybody loves bench press. And so if you love bench press and you want to improve your bench press, yeah. many times the uh, limiting factor on a bench press is the lockout. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is the tricep. And so your ability to do close grip bench and get stronger in that will carry over to your bench press. 100%. All right, next. Uh, now, this is a popular exercise, but oftentimes people don't do it this way. And that is one rep sets of weighted pull-ups. What do I mean by that? Well, just like when you do your deadlift, where you're hitting a one rep set where it's loaded heavy. It's not your max, but it's 95% of your max or 90% of your max. And you're doing just one rep and that's your set. Try that with pull-ups. Mm. Load something around your waist. Go up there. Do one grinding pull-up with a weight that you might be able to do two with. So you're just doing one. Do five sets of that. Watch how strong you get and how well developed your lats get. It's interesting. Nobody ever does pull-ups uh, in this way. Yeah, a lot of these types, even dips, I would say, well, not quite as much as as I I would see uh, with pull-ups, like because it's such a challenging exercise already. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely rep focused, and I think that that it just gets mm -hmm. lost into the to the rep focused where you can take some of these exercises, you add load, you you reduce your reps, and and now it's like pure strength focus. I mean. Uh, Pure uh, transparency. I w neglected this in in all exercises until we all really got together. I never trained under five reps. It was just to me. I always thought, oh, I'm not going to be a power lifter. Yeah. I don't really care about max yet. Totally missed out on the gains that came from that. And I remember when we first started podcasting together. I was in the thick of bodybuilding, and I went on this kick of starting to train singles, doubles, and triples on exercises that I knew they had great care of, the deadlift, the squat, the pull-up, the, these movements that were these big, strong compound movements by actually going, hey, I'm going to do eight sets of ones. You know, yes, like you said, yes. pick a weight. I could probably grind out two or three, but just do one for like eight sets and holy shit, did my strength come up. Yep. I mean, everything moved up from that. And even though I was a bodybuilder person, I saw the gains aesthetically. It wasn't just I got mm -hmm. stronger in the gym. Obviously, that me getting stronger in the gym translated to me being able to lift more weight in all of my lifts, which translated to me building more muscle than I had built at that time. Totally missed out on that in my early career because I just neglected to ever do singles, doubles, or triples. Next up, uh, heavy sled movements, in particular, heavy sled driving. And I think the reason why we don't see this often is sled work tends to be relegated speed. to like athletic performance yeah, speed. and speed, which it's great for that. But if you've never loaded a sled to get real heavy where you can only take 10 steps or 15 or, you know, 16 steps, like, it becomes a real strength exercise. Now, one of the benefits of sled uh, movements in general is there's no negative part of the rep. Now, I know negative part of the rep builds muscle and all that stuff, but it also causes a lot of damage. So you can add sled work to your workout and not add a lot more damage, but add some really incredible volume. And then the strength you get all the way down to the tip of your toes is incredible because it involves the foot, the calf, the hamstrings, the quads, and the glutes. It's all course, concentric. It's all concentric. Which is rad. It's You don't find that a lot uh, available with exercises where it's like, you know, you can just really focus on that first initial contraction. And then, you know, because the, the the negative part, that's, that's always in the stability part. Um, you know, it takes a lot more like control and, and you know, it's a little bit more uh, damaging if, if, you know, like you, you, you increase the weight, but if it's all explosive power going into that, it's, it's very beneficial. Even as the bodybuilder guy, I loved the sled. It was such a great way to build volume into my programming and not to overtrain. Like yep. that was like one of my favorite ways. If I had just heavy backloaded squatted just a couple days before and was still recovering from that, um, I knew better than to go back into another like big heavy squat day or something from there. But yet I wanted to get this massive pump on my legs and some of the best pumps I've ever had yeah. in my quads was driving the sled. You yeah. want to get a massive pump, grind like heavy weight and push it slow on a sled and watch yep. how pumped your legs get. And then the carryover. Now I know we're talking about aesthetics here. Okay. But here a little side note, the carryover for functional performance, real world application um, I'll argue the sled is is at the top, mainly because I am pushing through my toes. Like very rarely in a sport are you flat footed while you're driving. Mm -mm. You're almost always on the balls of your feet yep. unless you're getting knocked on your butt. And so the sled strengthens the calf and the foot. How often do we strengthen our foot in that position? You'll see this. If you yeah. ever if you've never done this before, you'll notice like, 
wow, I, I felt my foot working. There's a lot of muscle in the body of your feet that need to get strengthened as well, which have lots and lots of carryover to posture, to strength, stability, the whole nine yards. By the way, special mention, I know we said five, special mention, heavy dumbbell pullovers. Uh, you still don't th see these very often. You can go really heavy on these. You can treat these like a strength exercise they used to back in the day. And it, it's not really even a compound lift, but in my experience with my training and other people's training, you can get pretty damn strong with this and get some really, really well-developed Why do you lats. think it doesn't get, a, why do you think it's fallen out of favor? I mean, it, it's it's taking the lats through a good range of motion. So it's not like it's a shortened partial type of exercise. Like it's, you can load it really good too. Yeah. It's not like you can only do it with like, like why? why I mean, th that's a good question. It's a good question as to why it was even considered a strength. And back in the day with <laughs> with bodybuilders, they would, they would compete over a pullover, which is also equally as weird. <laughs> So I don't know. I have no idea why. Maybe because a straight arm pull over or pull down is easier with a cable. Yeah, but yeah. Then it's you can't load it the same no way. way. No. Yeah, you no can way. you can load a dumbbell pull over. Oh so yeah, much cross so bench. I mean, you yeah. give me a hundred and forty pound dumbbell, and I'm. I mean, I I, I will build uh, my lats like, yeah. like nothing else. Yeah, yeah, and it's and you are you can take it to this great range of motion. Yeah. So it's like I don't understand why it's it's fallen out of favor. I mean, we talked about it not that long ago, and I instantly implemented it into my routine because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you're right. I have not. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't done that. Maybe yeah. just because the setup on it's different i don't know yeah it's, just, it's weird that you, you don't you know see what's weird too what's funny is where i work out the two times i've seen people do a cross bench pull over i'm watching them and i'm like i wonder if they're following a maps program and they were oh, yeah. <laughs> both times I, I, I walked up and i said are you following it yeah oh my god yeah I love that's it. what i thought when i saw people doing the windmill and yeah and it was the same yeah, yeah, yeah people yeah. don't just randomly do that yeah. yeah hey sorry to interrupt do you want to improve your squat Without injuries, you want to have a stronger squat. You want to have a deeper squat. We have a free how to squat like a pro guide. It's totally free, and you can get it right now. In it, we describe details, exercises, techniques, and ways you can improve your squat so that you start to squat like a pro. You can get it for free right now if you click on the link in the description below. All right, all right. Awesome. Since we're talking about muscle building, I'm going to give a little uh, mention to my ultimate muscle building meal. Uh, and I know we've talked about this before and it's the same meal for you guys, but it's inexpensive. You get great macros, great protein, and it's palatable. It tastes good. It's not something that's gross or whatever. And it's just, and I still go, I always go back, back to this. I always go back to it is ground beef and rice, rice, yep. throw some salsa or some guac or some cheese in there. And it's like muscle building food right there. You get everything in there. Onions and mushrooms are my thing. That's what I throw in there. That's like, mm -hmm. it's an easy thing to throw in there. What I love about it too, is you can make it in bulk. Yes. Yeah. So it's, like, it's and so it, easy and, and it's, inexpensive. And it's just as good when you cook it all together like that. And then you mix it together. The juices from the, the onions and the juices from the mushrooms and everything gets in there with the meat and the rice. And it only tastes as good or better the next two so or three days. What so. I started doing, because uh, you guys know, you know, I have a problem with, uh, I can go through long periods the time of just ordering food and being real lazy. Um, and you know, I didn't want to look at my DoorDash bill. It's, a, it's embarrassing. So what I did was I went on my butcher box and I ordered a lot of their ground beef. Mm -hmm. They have grass fed ground beef. So the fatty acid profile is great. It's exactly what I did. I made a whole bunch of it. I used taco seasoning and salt, put it in some rice and I, I'll eat that three times a day. No problem. Yeah, easily sure. hit my protein yeah. targets, easily get all my carbs, everything that I need. We had that last night, but with like some ginger or something else and like green beans, but oh, like yeah. same thing. And it was like fantastic. I mean, you throw, uh, and you can, what I like too, is you can throw little things on it to dress it up a little bit. You could throw a little bit of cheese on there, give add some flavor to it. You can you throw, throw sour a, cream. You can throw an avocado on yeah. there. You can throw three eggs in the morning for breakfast oh, yeah. on the top of it. Like there's a lot of things you can do. It's a do. good base for a lot it of things. It is a great it's a yeah. great base and then all of a sudden it becomes a you know burrito bowl you know or it becomes right. it stand alone by itself or it becomes yeah. like a breakfast bowl or if you're so like a college student and you're like i need how do i save money like it's this it's the most inexpensive healthy like <laughs> great meal you could do yeah and you, i know you're i know you're talking about butcher box and everything like that and it, and obviously a grass-fed version uh, is the is the best a better way to do this but this is such a good example because you get people sometimes like it's so expensive to eat healthy and it's like it's not if you do things like that. Yeah. Like you, especially Even grass fed ground beef is not expensive. Especially when you compare it to eating out. If mm -hmm. you compare it to eating out, um, yeah. then uh, absolutely. If you compare it to just straight up calories to McDonald's 99 cent menu, then yeah, that's where you're going to run into that. But 
nutrient wise what you're getting out of a you know 99 cent menu at McDonald's mm. versus what you're getting. Do they still in have a, a 99 cent menu by the way with inflation? I think it might be dollar. <laughs> it's like a two dollar. That's right. It's a five. I, do, I, think, it's, I think it's dollar. Doug, look it up and it see. It used to be 99. I think it's dollar 99. Do you know now. that they changed dollar stores now? They're not dollar stores anymore. Yeah, they had to. Yeah. yeah. What do they call it now? I think they're like. Don't the, they still call it that though? No. Money they have, store. They do because there's the. Oh, dollar, I think you're right. They the still call it that. But when you go in there, it's like there's everything is is three dollars and less or something like that. They totally changed it, the, yeah, the whole thing. That's hilarious. Isn't that ridiculous? That yeah, is hilarious. Know. All right, so I got some, I just read about this interesting invention. Do they still have it, Doug? Did you find it? They do not. Yeah, okay. No Sorry longer exists. You get one French fry? <laughs> 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 All right, check out this invention that is pretty amazing. In fact, as I was reading this, I'm like, Justin could really make a, like he could do great with this invention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> anyway, just wait for it. Okay. So South Korean professor uh, Cho Jae Won, he developed a groundbreaking toilet that transforms <laughs> <laughs> human waste into energy and it rewards its users with digital currency. What? So each person's, what? <laughs> so a, a person's daily 500 grams of feces oh my is God. converted into 50 liters of methane gas. Wow. Which produces half a kilowatt of energy. When you do that, the in these, this this toilet, which is hooked up to the web or whatever, it sends you a digital currency. <laughs> this is the funny part. It's called shitcoin. Shit. <laughs> yes. Is that real? Yes. It's not real. This yes, is, are you is. being trolled? No, it's You're real, not being dude. Trolled? It's real. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh but, yeah, you create energy from uh, from your poop, apparently. Wow. You make meth uh, methane. My friend Ed would is crush it? that. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a billion, <laughs> he's a billionaire. <laughs> is it the new thing now, like uh, the hydrogen cars? Isn't that what, we, what we're on to right now is the hydrogen cars? You know, car? that's been around for a while. Why, is, is it coming back? I, I saw some article on like some new, some car that's being made right now that that runs on hydrogen and it's supposed to go like 700 and something miles and go so fast it's like why are why i don't understand that was always the I, if i recall that was always the best technology from what i heard but the, what are the drawbacks i don't know i don't understand why you crash and it explodes into like the only oh, yeah. thing that, that has ever made sense to me when people talk the about stuff bomb. like that is that the the you know Companies like Exxon and stuff like that that lobby against that yeah. is what's so powerful. It's less to do with how great that technology, how smart, affordable, and <laughs> better it would be. It's more to do with the people who control it right now. Are yeah, because they just so run on water, right? Who's the, yeah. who's the car brands that are adopting that right now? It was like, uh, there was like two that up, just Doug. merged. It was like Toyota and somebody else. I think you're right, Justin. I think you, we probably saw the same article. That's what made me bring it up. Yeah. Like there's, there, there, I think one of the, the big brands merged with somebody it's else. It's got to be. I was like they're finally adopting you this. know you know how they talk about technology that is sticky you know like if you um like for example our, our maps programs are on this uh use this product that manages them and kajabi it, it, it administers all, all that stuff if we ever wanted to switch out of there it'd be such a pain in the ass yeah it's a real to pain. move everything because we've built that everything on top we're of just it. gonna stay there all right we're just gonna stay it's sticky I wonder if one of the one of the issues with this is just the infrastructure. Like they create a carb, okay, now we're gonna make get hydrogen of from. Of course, yeah, because they, they already like have it. all the systems. Yeah. They so have all the way they ship Toyota, Toyota everything. Toyota Mira introduced a 2014 remains a cornerstone to his hydrogen efforts. Now in the second generation, 2024 Mira features an enhanced driving range up to 400 miles, improved aerodynamics, and advanced safety features. The Mira continues to gain traction in markets like California and Europe. See, the problem is the infrastructure. Cool, that's got to be it. Like, there's nowhere to, to fill up. You know what I mean? That's probably the Isn't issue. Isn't it just water? Oh, yeah. Yes, but I think there's something about it. I don't think it's just, I don't think you just load it with water. Oh, you don't think it's like no. just like- You think it's like a hybrid with like electric or- I don't know. I wonder. I, yeah, there you go, Doug. Uh, how do you fuel up? Let's look that up because I think- if it's just water, I mean, party, like that's available everywhere. Yeah, see, I think you have to go to a hydrogen pump. Yeah, fuel. there is a pump. Yes. Yep. Oh, what? So that, so the infrastructure- So, so there's so, a car, they actually have a car already being sold in production wow. right there. Yeah. So where do, where do you does get that, these? Does that mean it doesn't make sound like electric cars? Probably not. I hate, I hate sound that. It's just cars. bubbles. Like, <laughs> 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 sounds like a bong. <laughs> 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 what was that? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm so curious. In 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 like how this is all going to play out, and then because it's all coming so fast. You have you have hydrogen cars. You have so many people adopting electric. It's all coming so fast. You have you have hydrogen cars. You have so many people adopting electric vehicles and hybrids and. Uh, you just yeah, we have uh, self driving cars that are popping up all yeah. over the place. They now. already have self driving taxis in San Francisco. I know. I, I've been uh, in L.A. I've watched uh, our friend Jen Cohen. I've seen her multiple times now in her story. And she took one. She's been getting shuttled around in a driverless car. 
And, and see, she, I, I would just be afraid, just kind of paranoid that I'm in there. Yes. And then, you know, the government's like, oh. He's well, I heard that somebody remote is still controlling those, or is the, are they fully automated? I don't know. Yeah, That's a good some kid with a little video. Yeah, well, I, I literally I saw heard that. Like I saw like, that feature on Tesla. Somebody was posting a story the other day of that where you have this app with Tesla and you can have your car brought to you. So, like, if you oh, park if in it's a, parked, yeah, you park in a huge such a lot. sick feature. That is cool, yeah. right? Especially the of the times too where you guys have parked. I do this every time we fly, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to take a picture of where I parked. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying you're in the airport. Did you like, hear what Justin did once? No, he did that, and he had to walk around the whole. Right? Did you have to walk oh, around the whole yeah. airport yeah. to find your car? Oh, in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, I, I literally had no idea where I parked it because it, it was like we started out in San Jose and then it was so bad, like they kept like shifting flights and all this, like screw it, let's try to go out of San Francisco. And so we went up to San Francisco and I just like in a rush, like because we were like- Forgot to take a picture, huh? Yeah, forgot to take a picture. And then San Francisco, you know how crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I don't even know what layer I was on. You know, yeah. I was like, it took me like, I think four different attempts at oh, like God. walking the entire- And you're pushing the alarm trying to yeah. hear it? Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I've done that at San Took Jose forever. before because San Jose has the two different parking garages, yes. and so I actually did take a picture. I had the right level, and then I had the wrong garage. So I'm like, <laughs> on, I'm like, this is makes sense. I have the like, I'm yeah. for a, for a long time before I realized, oh shit, I was in the whole Dude, wrong garage. I did that once, and I kept hitting the alarm thing, and I kept hearing my car, and it was yeah. so frustrating. Cause I could hear it, but I couldn't <laughs> find it. You know what it was? Yeah. It was right above me. Oh God! He but it sounded like you? it was down oh. where I was, and I kept walking around like, "Where is it?" Bro, it was so funny. I actually told the kids and Courtney like after because they were kind of following me, and I'm like, "You guys stay here where the elevators are and don't follow me." And I was like so pissed, I'm like, ah! yeah. I'm like sprinting, you know. Trying to- <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> They did not want to be around me. I can That's- only imagine how pissed you were too, because you get back from a long trip and saying you just want to get home and get yeah. out of there, and you're like uh, spinning. I was a over it, dude. Oh god, oh, it was brutal. Yeah. It was good stuff. Hey, speaking Real of good. angry and stuff, I thought this. This I thought of this the other day because I had a, a friend of mine who uh, was just about to get married. And he was like, hey, do you have any advice or whatever? And, you know, first off, I'm like, well, I was divorced once. You probably don't ask me. But but no, so all joking aside, I said, uh, well, here's some things that you that totally help if you guys ever get an argument. I was messing with them, right? Yeah. So I'm like, if your wife's ever. So I want to hear what you guys think. I said, here's something. If your wife's ever really mad at you, if you just say this, it totally calms things out. Just tell her, say, you should probably just calm down. So yeah. Totally, and he yeah. looked at me all confused, you know. Yeah. And my wife was there looking at me like, "Can you yeah. please tell her your joke?" Yeah. It works like it works yeah. so. It works well. as bad Do you as need good a time as asking out? your wife when she's in a bad mood like that if she's on her period. That's oh, like that's about, as, that's yeah, about yeah, yeah. as good as that. Do one. I need to go get some chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'll get killed. They don't like that. You'll yeah. get killed yeah. if you did something like that. I'm yeah. trying to think the things that like really like you, you should never say that I get with that. Yeah, where Katrina's just like you get she gets really pissed. I'm probably it's probably more if uh, I'm being sure then that's what will really a- annoy her for no reason right because I'm gonna sh- I normally don't there's not a lot of things that I can say to her that will really yeah. send her off the edge if I were to say something stupid like that where like, I point you should it probably out, calm down she'll laugh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or if I said something interrupt about, like, her and period. solve the problem for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they love that. <laughs> she really likes well, that. While right? she's yeah. talking, wait, well, hold on. I know yeah, what your problem yeah. is. <laughs> that's what you need to do. <laughs> Courtney's kind of on this. She's okay, like, Stop that's mansplaining. That, oh, so that Katrina does get mad about that, right? Like, I there's times where I'm like telling her something, and then she gets mad, or she'll she'll be like roll her eyes like i didn't need you to explain that to me or tell me like that i'm like well you asked i thought you didn't know and so right. you wanted so right i get that one wrong quite a bit actually well, they just want to be heard yeah. by the way mansplaining is when a man explains something yes. <laughs> <laughs> see i appreciate when you do that yes yeah, i don't know why you know no it's hilarious now, now, have, now that i have a teenage daughter too it's funny because now i'll hear she probably calls it out her mom and her stepmom will now say it to me quietly. When something's happened, they'll look at me like, oh, she's about to start a period. I'm like, oh, it's okay for you guys to talk about it amongst yourselves, <laughs> but I can't bring it up like it matters. That's the inside club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not you're, part of it. You're, you're, not, you're, not, allowed to, you're not allowed yeah. to do it. Dude, yeah, I just see. saw this. This uh, So I don't, I don't know when this episode airs, but I think we're still going to be in election season when this is coming out. I or think is this, this is actually- No, this a, is post-election. This is post-election. Okay, so fine. We have, we, have oh a new, God. we have a new president right now. Unless we don't know yet because shit hit the fan. We, uh, who knows, right? We uh, don't know. But uh, I was reading these stats, and I'm just like, you know, and maybe it's good that's after elections, so people are going to calm down a little bit. But man, the 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 political marketing is so ridiculous and so effective that people literally believe the craziest thing. I just read this this survey. I'm going to read this to you. This was a survey 
where they surveyed uh, liberal Americans, moderate Americans, and conservative Americans. And the question was, or the statement was, Donald Trump wants children to learn that slavery was a good thing. <laughs> what? Okay. Ready for this? Liber the people, liberal the people that believe a it. majority of liberals believe that's true. <laughs> How you could just say whatever the fuck you want, uh, you know, at this point, dude. They a majority, well, well, now, a majority what, believe what that's that, true. What, what that, yes, yeah, what that highlights though dude. is how good of marketing the other side does, uh, yes. to their people, right? Yes. Because if you're if you consider yourself that side, you probably consume all of that content, and ninety percent of the content is attacking him. He's yeah. he's racist. He's sexist. He's all these things, and so it's believable. Of course, yeah. I could see him saying that. That's like, so funny. Yeah, right. I mean, I was actually talking about this with Corey because, like, I saw like the post with, um, you know, Kamala had a picture of of her uh, in a McDonald's outfit, and it turns out it was like totally fake. There was a, a girl that they mo they they took the picture of this girl that was an employee at McDonald's, and they superimposed her oh. face on it, and it was proven. And all, but like. You know, none of my friends like, is done. are voting for her. You know, they don't. You know, like they don't believe it or they don't care or anything. Yeah. And so it's just like, now okay. did she did she willingly share or or get behind it or is that just some somebody else? It probably did? went viral. Yeah, this was a viral I think picture. she shared it. Uh, yeah, but it, it doesn't really me. matter unless she like it'd be okay if 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 she had any role in making the AI and doing oh, that. Oh, she shared it? Yes. So it was fake, but she shared yes. it? Yes. That would be oh, really bad. Oh, that's hilarious. Is that, are you sure about that? Because that would be really bad. Fact check it. That would be really bad. It, yeah. it, another, like, if someone else did it, then it's like, well, that's what Dude, was the game, present, it's how they, it was presented to me. And again, like, I have to be careful. I don't believe anything. The game, the game yeah, of, I know. It's like, it's so tough listen, like, to, to will decipher. Show something like, yeah, I don't believe it. The bro. game it's of like, politics, the, the political game is this. First of all, they spend billions of dollars they are masters of manipulation. Yeah. They're the best manipulators. There's so much at stake here. People need to understand. There's massive corporations, billionaires, governments, all have a vested influ uh, interest in getting certain people elected or getting the other person not elected. So you're talking about the master manipulators of the world converging and working together. Which and yeah, I don't think she posted it. <coughs> I mean, uh, no. Somebody else did? No, it's been pretty well proven that it's fake. And... Uh, I don't but, think she but posted she didn't it. Share it. I don't see anywhere that she did. Uh, I'll keep searching. Well, Justin you are on Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a problem, yeah. is it not? See? Of course. <laughs> Good yeah. duck, duck, she duck. owns Google. <laughs> no, so my, my point with this is, is that, uh, and, and nobody goes to jail for lying. And you can say anything. And the dam once the damage is done, the person will come back and say, oh, that's not true. It's proven not true. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's already gone viral. So the name of the game, so do you guys remember when we were younger, before the internet was a big thing, do you remember tabloids, where you were in the in the line oh, yeah. at the grocery store? Wolf yeah. boy, yeah, you know, wolf <laughs> boy, you know, you know, there's, or woman that gives birth to three turtles or weird yeah. lies, right? Yeah. It was like yeah, Sun yeah. and uh, Inquirer. Yeah, Maggie, yeah, like, yeah. They still exist, I believe. They do, but do they? You know, nobody oh yeah, them anymore. oh yeah. That's like dude, real my news grandma now. loved those, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you read all those weird? <laughs> always, <dudes? laughs> always. You know, always. it's just a bunch of gossipy, like false stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what this is all about. And so the, the, it's just, it's hard to parse out and it's eff it's effective. That's why they do it. It is. It, what's unfortunate, I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm most disappointed in us as a society that we don't demand conversations around policies and things. We, let, we allow the identity politic game to be played. Yeah. Like, who cares? I really, yeah. do, like, I don't care about Kamala as a person. I don't care about Trump as a per. Like, uh, yeah. if you are in politics the and of you, the country. Seek, if you <laughs> seek presidency, yeah. you probably are a bit of a narcissist. You're probably not somebody For sure. I would the be. The fact that you want to be president. So I don't care. So yeah. I don't care who you are really as a person. I care about the things that you are going to put into play or what you've already and, voted and for. And what is going to affect us economically, mm -hmm. socially, like our country, our cities, like that stuff matters the most to me. So I, the fact that people allow us to get manipulated that way and turn it into, he's the bad man or she's a stupid person. Like, it's like, Let's not. Let's just talk about the stuff that they plan yeah. to do, and let's debate that. That is such a better way to communicate. Right away, like I don't even want to ever talk to somebody when they attack the person. Yeah. It's like I don't like you. You already have been manipulated so much that your go-to thing to slam the other opponent is about them. Like I don't yeah. like as a person. Like I don't care about them as a person. It doesn't. It's irrelevant to me. I don't believe any of them. 
They, they, just, they, got, they got to that position, it, it, being able to manipulate, lie, step on people, and other backdoor it, it just, deals. It's, it's like, gotten to who such, cares? It's gotten to such a crazy place. Mm -hmm. it's, and I think uh, marketing has gotten so much more effective because of social media. It's in your face more often. So the, same, the majority of us are stupid. The old That's game why. is just more effective now. It's because so, a majority of us are stupid. Oh, and, and a majority of us are sheep and can be manipulated and cattled into... <laughs> any direction that we want to by playing to our emotions and our feelings and playing the identity. Yeah. It's unfortunate that we don't demand more yeah. and that and, we and don't just, and then we don't allow We don't play that game. And you know like, what else is crazy is you is here's, there's, here's stuff that nobody even accounts for. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled understanding your mood, stress and sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below other countries will play into the game to mess with the system. Of course. Yeah. And and it's it's so hard to control mm -hmm. because there's no way of knowing who's doing what. Not only that, it's but, so then, crazy. but and then then it's spun as the the opponent is the one who yeah. is co you know colluding with that country when it's like really that country just wants it for their <laughs> it's yeah, like they just want to mess oh, with us. Yeah. I heard a, a an interesting thought and it was from Dave Smith, like that comedian, he's yeah. like libertarian. He was talking about like, you know, the moment there was this big movement on like Occupy Wall Street was big on the left. They're oh, yeah. they all like encamping there. It was like, but they're targeting the elites at this point. Right. And, and on the other side of it, I'm trying, oh, it was like the, the tea, uh, party? tea Party yeah. was the other side of that all simultaneously, both, you know, really addressing like the, the bigger picture of like the elites and like yeah. why, you know, all this money is like, you know, uh, being distributed this way and all stuff. And, and then all of a sudden now you see the switch right after that of identity politics and like bombarding yeah. the whole new cycle with like, you know, race stuff and, and with yeah. like gender stuff and like all of that. It all happened like right after that. Well, if you, you see know, a big movement in your, if you're one of these manipulators, these, these puppet masters, um, and you're an expert, remember, okay. Again, I got to say this again. They're smarter than you are way smarter than you are at manipulation. So don't think you're like, you're so smart that you can't see as well, but that's what they do. If they see a movement, they don't stop the movement. They go in and infiltrate the movement. And the way they infiltrate the movement is they start in, right. they in, putting in little messages that slowly divert people into, and it's not hard to get pissed off people more pissed off in a little bit of a different direction in creating other boogeymen. And that's yeah, just I, I, I also hate the narrative the, the, around the elite. Like the uh, elite are the, all these awful people. And the reason why that, that one triggers me so much is because I was raised that way. I was taught that evil money was evil. People that had lots of money were bad people. And the opposite was true when I reached that place. When I got to that place where I was actually around people that were like that, some of the best people, some of the kindest people, some of the most giving people that I ever met were elite were the people that made nah, lots they of weren't. Money. They weren't elite, bro. We're talking. No, that's not. That's not. You're talking class. about wealthy. We're talking people. about. Yeah. That, well, let me tell you. you didn't that's hang out what with Diddy. That's what yeah, you're talking about. Like, like world those, leaders, those are celebrities. Yeah. World, that's world not leaders. elite. See, that, that's a that's a problem though. Is we yeah. we lump everybody who's been successful. You're in right. The elite it's a general category. name. That's like why general, it's terrible. Yeah. Like there's yeah. there's there's a huge difference between a politician, a musician, artist. And just people that are super wealthy because yeah. they built great businesses and made a lot of money. Right. But we yeah. tend to talk about them as if they're this. Uh, you one. lump them in together. Yes, yeah. yeah. no. that's why I hate that term of, no, of right. elite. It, it's the is policy it, makers. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, and that's it's a problem. That's what they need to target though. Like you need. I mean, if you're going to move the needle, you got to go you to know, the the mouth. The you know. You know my favorite thing the saying is the, <laughs> yeah, the, the horse's like, mouth. There yeah. you go. You know what my favorite uh, evidence on this is follow. Congress's stock picks. Just do that. Just follow the stock market, the things that they pick in the stock market, what they invest in. Well, and you will see especially Pelosi. blatant, blatant, yeah. blatant insider trading. And they know the laws that are about to pass. They'll buy the company, whatever. And they, they outperform. It's, it's crazy that that's legal. They there's, outperform there's social the media, best investment Bro, there's social media influencers that have made uh, a living off of sharing that stuff for yep. people. And, and a lot yeah. of them get blocked and taken down. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of people that have made good money just by simply just doing copying that. Them. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to somebody who was just doing an interview on a podcast, and they said like four or five years ago. I wish I could give the name of the the handle, but they're like uh, they were talking about the success they've had in the stock market, and they're like, yeah, I actually just started following this page that does all what the politicians, <laughs> yeah, and I just dude. literally every time they posted that this person just bought this, I just followed their lead and bought it. And so messed up. They've crushed the. Wow. They've crushed it. They've wow. like they've earned like thirty five percent on their money in like the last five years. 
just by simply whatever the politicians bought, I just followed it and bought it. And I'm like, God damn it, I should have done that. <laughs> yeah. Like, the well, I mean, you knew at one point, you knew somebody that knew somebody who was part of the quote unquote elite in the political class. Yeah, yeah. And they told you, like one story in particular you've told me a couple of times, was how they have families, s side yeah. fam, the yeah. real families, yeah, and then yeah. they have their picture families, and everybody knows about it. And nobody that, calls that was, each other. By out. the way, that was coming yeah. from the horse's mouth. Uh, this is like somebody who's like directly, directly connected, like uh, the wife of a president, like that connected. That's how uh, this person was, and I knew uh, them, and uh, and I won't say uh, who or what, but I will say that that was something told to me, and I was like, no way, yeah. like. Like yes, it's like a behind the doors. They agree. Everybody that knows you don't. You you can come after my political family, you know, and what we put out there, but you don't touch you my don't real go family. Over here. My real kids, yeah. my real wife. My it's like well, shut the fuck up. Are we really being like duped yeah. like that much? It's that like we pageant. Like it's not watching, even really yeah. like the real like the real true families. That might. I mean, it's believable though. <laughs> it is believable. because especially. I mean, I remember when I House of Cards. Was House of Cards was a great like I think a great depiction, depiction of, of what it's probably and everybody that I know that's in that world that has said like that is probably one of the best depictions of how it really gets down and you know that those relationships they're paired together like you don't you don't take a super powerful guy and just marry an average jane like he needs to marry a powerful woman who's well connected who's who can speak in front of the camera and do all these things because it or else they're never going to reach the top mm -hmm. you need both the husband and the wife to have that kind of power so it makes you wonder like oh my god like how many of these yeah like i wonder what happened behind the scenes like a real real happened behind the scenes when when bill got busted you know getting a you know blowjob in yeah. the white house I could totally they wonder what else he did. You I, know? Totally yeah. feel, I totally, I to totally feel like that, that. That's like, you idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Feel like a conversation. You're blowing like, our cover, you dumbass. Like you <laughs> yeah, couldn't, you, wait, you couldn't wait until you. Got, like, yeah. you know, I, I feel like it was a conversation. Like it now, I have to act like I care. Yeah, I know. Yeah. God, now I you gotta go do dog. all this. I'm like, you know what you're doing for the next six months, and then she yeah. probably, was, he was punished. You know what I'm saying? He was punished at home for some shit, and that's exactly. It was like it was not like oh we're divorcing. Oh none of that bullshit matter. It was like literally you're an idiot. You know. Now for the next six months, you're doing the dishes because of that bullshit, you know, something like that. You know, it was uh, like I could totally see that conversation yeah, yeah. happening, dude. Anyway, so uh, so the black, I got to talk about this because Black Friday's uh, here. Oh. So um, uh, we're doing something different this time. Yes, yes. Uh, who who's our company that we're working with right now that has a really crazy black PRX? Friday? PRX. Yeah, PRX has got a great. Black PRX Friday. has a really good Black Friday deal going on right now. So great exercise equipment, which I love because it gets people set up for. January. What are yeah. they doing, Doug? What is their deal? Yeah, so uh, all their racks and profile folding benches are on sale. Uh, so that starts on 11-1, goes through uh, Cyber Monday on the Hundreds second. of dollars off. Oh, yeah, hundreds of dollars off. Uh, I mean, which by, by the substantial way, discount. They don't do a lot of like, yeah, sales. So people, okay, when I would uh, negotiate these contracts with our partners, one of the hardest ones to negotiate was PRX, and not because they're hard to work with by any means or anything like that. I ran into this with every uh, equipment or company like this, because in that industry there is the margins are sh so slim. It's yeah. very competitive. Very slim. Yeah. There, it's very heavy. So and, discounts are and, and so hard. like discount. They're just they don't make a lot. And so as much as you would love to have like a, like and all my friends and family always tell me, oh, what you got to hook up on gym equipment. It's like ah. I get a little bit of a tiny discount. It's not very much because the margin. So when they discount by hundreds of dollars, that is better than any discount I have ever seen uh, personally that I could even have access to. And we work with these companies and have partnerships with them. So that's a hell of a now, Black Friday. Speaking sale. of which, this is the first time we've ever done this. Is I'm excited we're, about. We're going to give away uh, a vacation to the Mind Pump House in, in Park City. By the way, for people who don't know, so this house we we outfitted it and, and optimized it for biohacking, for fitness, for health. So literally the house itself, first off, it's a sick place in a great location, especially if you love to ski, especially if you love good restaurants, like it's amazing. But in the house, first off in the garage, we've got a PRX gym. We have an incredible sauna, like mm -hmm. a beautiful sauna. There's a cold dip in there as well. You have uh, red light therapy in the bedrooms. You have sleep systems on the beds. Am I missing anything? Steam room. Movie theater. Steam movie room. theater. Yeah, movie so, arcade. Hot tub. Uh, hot, hot tub. tub. So when you, when you go there and stay there, like if you're a fitness fanatic, <laughs> you're like, set up. Like, like do this. That's what you got to do. Do the cold dip, lift, follow it with the sauna, then do some red light therapy. 
watch how great you feel. You'll and be you'll ha- humming. Oh, yeah. You yeah. feel incredible. You can see the house at mindpumprentals.com, right, Doug? That's correct. Yeah, so if you if you want to see what the house looks like, it's at mindpumprentals.com. I mean, you're talking about something that runs close to $1,000 a night mm-hmm. that we're going for a five-night stay, plus we're doing a $1,000 voucher, so if you got to fly from somewhere so we can try and take we'll care cover of your, your, cover your travel. So basically trying to set up. And then it's got three bedrooms plus a pull-out couch. So if you wanted to go with your family and friends and do that, you'd be more yeah. than welcome to do it. If you got kids, they can stay in the theater. That's yeah, what we did. really, really cool. And yeah, yeah, we actually have air. We have a couple of King Air mattresses there too. So if you had overflow that you could stay inside there with even more people than that. Um, something we've never done before. Thought it'd be really cool. We all kind of got our put our heads together and thought, what could we do for Black Friday that's unique, special uh, to give away outside of all the great deals and stuff that we have? Yeah, so we're, we're doing sixty percent off of programs. But then with this, uh, every time you get a bundle, you get ten entries to win that uh, program, five entries, and then everything else about is is one entry. So. The more things you get at discount, uh, yeah. the more of these entries you get. Stock up. And by the way, there's going to be two winners. Yeah. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And both of you are getting vouchers and five day stay. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it makes for clamped. More time. of those. Yeah, it does. Use. It's just like. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> The more that more of the entries that you get, the more likely you are to get pulled for one of the two winners, and then we'll announce it after the whole Black Friday sale is all over. So good luck, go get it, and hopefully get into. I love it that. when people stay there, dude. I love it because they'll send us pictures and tell us all about it. And yeah, I I love so I wish there were more places like this. So, so the idea with this place was we were going to buy a property and create an experience mm-hmm. uh, centered around fitness, health, biohacking, you know, reduce inflammation, the whole deal. That's why we outfit. I wish there were more places like this. I would, this is when I pick hotels, you guys know, this. I, I mean, the this gym. is my I fault. It's not, it's my fault. It's not. I mean, this has been, uh, you know, one of, one of the hardest parts about this business is all the different things that we have going on. This has been a, a, a vision of mine for a long time. I believe one day we will, have 10 of these rentals all over that are outfitted like this. They just, it takes a lot of work to, to build them out, to market them, to get them filled up, to actually cash flow it's enough. Expensive, yeah. yeah and, it, and it's, a, and just straight transparency. It's a, it's a lot of work and effort to cash flow enough to justify the time that it takes to do that. I believe in it. I believe that it's a, it's a, a model that nobody is doing really that I think there's a huge opportunity, but like any business with a great opportunity, it still requires a lot of time and effort into it. And we really haven't, we've put them in, we've, We've literally just finished the website like what a month ago or two mm. the website finally got finished to actually present it well we don't market it we bring it up on the show a handful of times mm. um and it does well i mean the place gets rented out probably half the year but if it needed to be really profitable we need to be renting that sucker out every single day of the year and then it would make sense to get another one so i still see that as something in the future it's just an area mm. that we haven't put a lot of energy and focus so, so. i tell you guys what uh one of the gifts that we're doing for my four-year-old for his birthday What's that? So my wife, so you guys know how he's like super into garbage trucks? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about plants that eat things. No, but we did get that too. Okay. I found uh, a place uh, nearby. Oh, it's a local place. Carnivorous plants. And we got him a pitcher plant, which he's, which he's freaked out Has over. he seen it? Oh, he's seen it. Oh yeah. You guys yeah. showed you guys a picture, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He oh yeah. He told pumped. his mom, take a picture of me next to it. And he's That's like, right. yeah, so excited. Right. <laughs> and I get home yesterday and he's like. But, Pa, we could put ants in there and bugs, but I don't want them to be dead. I want to see them struggle and fall. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, we're going to figure this out. Help me. Yeah, dude, he yes. gets all, I told Jessica, too, she's like, how are we going to get live, because he wants live bugs to go in. I'm like, well, I could get a fly, and I could pull the wings off, and then put her, she's like, I don't want to teach him to, to <laughs> torture. Yeah, and I'm like, I mean, I used to do that. Every know. boy <laughs> does it. I know, they but get you think about it, it I get it. Well, like, it's an insane. Like, you could yeah. probably go go buy like a like a pet store or something. You probably get a bunch of animal pets or like little bugs and things like that. Yeah. You could probably throw. In oh, there, I could you? catch. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna catch a fly. So yeah. they're easy to catch. Yeah. And then you just grab them with some tweezers and then you put them on there and they Drop go and then they'll slide down the the, the okay. pitcher or you know, okay. whatever. Anyway, we did that. So what we have coming uh, at the end of the week is the garbage company. We told them it's his birthday, so they're gonna pull up in the garbage truck. They're gonna have balloons. No, they're not. Yeah, dude. And he's no, gonna go in not. and they're gonna let him. No, they're, they're not. Gonna, they're gonna show him the you truck. You got the garbage man to do that? Yeah, dude. That's, that's rad. Dude. That's My so... wife actually called the company. I mean, no, she's, she so, she's so thoughtful with that, birthdays. That's like, hilarious. I'm terrible with birthdays. I'm just like, buy something. Yeah. 
she literally called the company and they're like, yeah, we'll do that for you. Oh my God. So she's in contact He's with them. He's going to lose his mind. Yeah. He's going to lose what a his cool, mind. What a cool idea. Isn't that cool? That yeah. is a really cool idea. I can't idea. wait. And that's actually that's really dope. cool that they're willing to do that. It's great. Yeah. Well, actually they love it. You know, when, when they see little kids waving at them and stuff, I think they really appreciate yeah. it. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I teach the, I, teach I see them. that in the fire trucks. You yes. Know? Yeah. That same kind of response. Yeah. So we have a fire department not, not too far from the house. We walk by when we go to the park and if the garage is open, uh, we'll pause to look at the truck and if they're out there they always bring stickers and invite yeah, us in they're great about yeah, stuff. They, they love it i have a if you guys ever want to do that i have a but i've been waiting for max to like care or ask about that because i have a buddy that has told me already he's like hey when you want to whenever you want to take your son for a ride like i'll take him for a ride in the truck in so. the fire truck uh -huh. oh man yeah, yeah, i have that i have a contact for that guy I went to high school with that's great yeah firefighter yeah, no i can't wait i can't but they but i always teach him too whenever we see uh you know working men and women either fixing the sidewalk or doing the lamp post where i always pause and i, I say thank you to them in front of the kids because i want them to know yeah, yeah like they're they're working hard it, we should appreciate what they're yeah, doing yeah. Type that's of deal. so that's actually so isn't cool. that fun yeah. now what i hope they do i don't know if they're gonna allow this but i i hope he gets a chance to sit in there and then push one of the buttons i don't know oh, if they have it like oh like dude crush. if he could push the grabber arm Oh, the that's grabber! Oh, 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 he'll for, oh, that's it, dude. He'll he'll lose his mind. <laughs> I'll never hear the end of it. That'll be like the the, the end of it. It'll be yeah. the greatest birthday of all time. Oh, it's so if great. We, if we do that, uh, yeah. that's so cool. That's we, so cool. We have a shout out. I think we should mention that we're doing a uh, webinar this oh. next Tuesday. It's oh, for it, trainers. Oh, oh is, is a, it next Tuesday? Yes. Okay, so this is a good one. All right, so if you're a trainer or a coach, one of the challenges there's seasonal challenges with fitness. And one of the main ones is the holiday season. Gyms know this, right? Holiday season, reduced traffic, less memberships, personal trainers often struggle and will lose clients during the holiday season because people fall off, they traveled and they don't get back. So Adam and I are going to do a webinar on how to succeed through the holiday season, uh, retain clients during the holiday season, and even how to gain clients. Uh, during the holiday season, so the whole webinar is going to be about that. Yeah. So, and it's you can it's going to be next Tuesday, and you can you can sign up for it free at trainerwebinar.com. It's totally free. Brain FM plays music in your ears that has been engineered by scientists to induce states of mind. No joke. You can listen to certain tracks that make you focus or meditate or sleep. It actually changes your brain waves. There's nothing else like this anywhere. Brain FM is truly remarkable. Anyway, get 30 days of access for free. Try it out for yourself. See what all the hype is about. Go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. Get that 30 days for free. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Erica from Arizona. Hi, Erica. Is that a home gym? Hello, hello. What's up, guys? How's it going? How you doing? Good. Is, is that your home? Good. Is that your home? This is my home gym. Yes. Wow. That's wow. Nice. <laughs> Super jealous. Yep. And we actually, we did this during COVID when they shut all the gyms down. We couldn't take it anymore. And this used to be like, this is our basement. So we, this used to be a hangout space for us and our kids. And we said, you know what? We're going to turn this into a home gym. So it was actually the best thing that we could have ever done for our family because everybody got healthier as a result. And uh, I actually, you know, I wanted to thank you guys, like everybody does, because, you know, I, I obviously hear my favorite podcast. I listen to you guys all the time and devour all your content. I was in financial services for about 25 years and retired early a couple years ago. And this gym was built just for us. But then I decided, you know what, I'm going to turn this into a side hustle. So I ended up getting my uh, certified personal trainer license. I'm a corrective exercise specialist, a certified nutrition coach, and I'm just turning this into like a little retirement side gig. So it's been <laughs> going pretty well the last year. I love That's it. So I, I love it. It's so awesome. What you got for us? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I had a question about HRV and let me give you some context on why I'm asking the question and kind of what's going on. So actually, ever since I decided to quit or retire from my, my corporate financial gig, um, I've been seeing a functional medicine practitioner in the efforts of just trying to optimize my health, you know, trying to optimize my hormones and everything that's going on with me. Um, and one of the things that had popped up in the last, I don't know, I, we've been going through some protocols that have been working pretty well, but one of the things that we had been talking about was just my HRV. And my HRV is relatively low, like it's in the low 30s, pretty typically, like sometimes I'll see a spike, but that spike doesn't necessarily correlate to like rest days or anything like that. 
And my functional medicine practitioner wanted to see that HRV going higher. And I feel like I'm doing all the things. Like I work out consistently. I get my steps. I get my morning sunshine. I sauna. I red light. I meditate. I get great sleep. But I can't seem to get my HRV to go any higher than kind of that mid-30s, low to mid-30 level. And maybe I shouldn't care, and maybe that's what you'll tell me, but I just thought it was interesting. I didn't know if you guys had any tips or tricks on ways to maybe think about getting that to improve. Yeah, one of the challenges with um, individual metrics is sometimes we get caught up in the individual metric and we ignore the whole picture. You know, if you feel good, you have good energy, good libido, and good sleep, good sleep, you're, you're performing well in the gym, you feel strong, you're recovering. I wouldn't get too caught up on this. Okay. Now, if the question still is, I want to see if I can improve my HRV based off of what you're telling me. Um, I would say back off a little bit on the workouts and increase your calories. Maybe get your body fat percentage up a little bit. Sometimes you see that with women. You seem like you're pretty lean. Also, Based on everything you're telling me, you're probably so consistent with everything that a little break might be a good idea. Um, do yeah. You, yeah. Do you know where your calories are at? I'm probably around 23 to 2,400. That's okay. not bad. That's not too bad. I mean, you could bump them 300 calories, two, 300 calories. That might make a difference. But, you know, you could do like a, a deload week or two, you know, mm -hmm. where you're like 50% volume and intensity for a couple weeks. Monitor your HRV if it gets better. Well, then you were probably doing too much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair. We have a vacation that's coming up right around Thanksgiving. So that I actually had planned to do nothing that whole time. So that will be my my goal is to just do nothing, enjoy my vacation and do whatever I feel like doing, lay on the beach, whatever. And then I'll see if there's any improvement. And I think that would be probably a perfect yeah. indicator yeah. that maybe yeah, it has to do back. with my training. I definitely, mm -hmm. I definitely think that's a great way to do it. Since that's already coming up, just let it unfold that way. And that would be obviously uh, pretty obvious if you see an improvement from taking a whole week off. Yeah. Um, but you know, normally I would, is there a reason just, just out of curiosity, why the, the, the functional medicine practitioner is even asking you it's HRV? Other, yeah. Like, uh, defining, no, not, I, you know, it was really related to some of my panels that came back. So like, I, like my, I have nothing that's out of range, but my thyroid is a little low. Like she wanted to see that more optimized and improved. My DHEA levels are low. So she wanted to, I don't know, she had tied that in some way to what she was seeing in my blood work and wanted to see if there was anything else that we could do to try to improve the HRV. Um, since then, I will say, I haven't necessarily seen an improvement in my HRV, but I've actually gone and seen a different practitioner that was more focused on um, like hormone optimization. And so literally in the last like three weeks, I just started hormone replacement therapy. Okay. I'm right in the throat of the perimenopause. So I don't know if that has anything to do yeah, with it, for sure. but I'm just like, I haven't, I haven't been able to see like any full results of that yet. Cause it's only been like three weeks, but I'm hoping that maybe that could also see some improvement with some of my other indicators. It's, as well. uh, it's common. It's common to see when you, when you're a woman in mid forties, it's common to see, uh, thyroid, uh, needing some thyroid hormone replacement therapy, DHEA, very common, uh, to, to supplement, to see some benefits. Yep. Sometimes testosterone is there as well. Um, I, you, you're going to start to see results probably two or three months in where you start to notice. Um, and you know, we, we have a few experts that we work with oh, on the subject. Shout out Dr. Lauren. Yeah. Dr. Lauren, Dr. Tina. And they're both like, they're such advocates for hormone replacement therapy. They're like, I think everybody, everybody should go on hormone replacement therapy, especially if you're fit and healthy. In the context of exercising and eating right, uh, hormone replacement therapy just improves quality of life and longevity. If you're unhealthy, obese, then you have to be careful, um, although it can help. Um, but in your case, I mean, you're so consistent. And, you know, again, when I talk to someone like you who who know, who's lists everything that they're doing and they're very consistent – and it's like, like you said, I walk this much, I strength train this much, I do this many trigger sessions, I do the sauna, I do the red light, I meditate every day. Uh, and, and then you want to improve a metric here or there. It usually has to do with a break or bumping calories, mm -hmm. typically. 
Got it. Okay. Yeah. And Dr. Tina, I actually watched that episode and that was what encouraged me to go and get another opinion about what was going on with some of my hormones. Cause my original functional medicine practitioner was kind of like, ah, oh, let's try some supplementation. I've been doing that for a while, not really seeing the improvement. Then I'm like, you know what? I just really want to see somebody who's like more hormone specialist. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I, I'm optimistic. Do you know what your body fat percentage is at? I never, no, I don't test it, but you can see my top couple abs. So I'm probably maybe 17, 18%. Yeah. yeah look, have you, you tried, me. have you tried, when's the last time you went on a bulk? You know, I normally bulk in the winter. So I go back and forth. So I'm coming off right now in the summertime. I normally hit maintenance. And then right around now, I'm starting to increase my calories. And to be honest, since I started hormone replacement therapy, my appetite's gone up. So I'm just organically starting to eat a little yeah, bit more. So I'm yeah. hoping to start bumping my calories here, like as of now, going forward all the way until maybe like March. And then I'll start to kind of level that I up. I wouldn't be surprised if that yeah. positively affected yeah. me. I would love to hear back from you, Erica. I have a feeling with you optimizing your hormones, <laughs> yeah. increasing your calories, we're going to see the bump in the HRV. Yeah. So, But again, don't get caught up on one metric. Yeah. You know, uh, if break. everything feels good, everything else is good it's like you know it's like when people get caught up on one blood metric but all the other stuff looks good it's like you know unless it's crazy mm -hmm. i wouldn't worry too much no you're kicking ass makes sense yep all right well thank you guys i appreciate the input it you was got great it. talking to you thanks you too, erica. erica all right take it easy you know ever since hrv became a thing i, I see more and more of this it, where people just get so focused yeah, on you, this one. You, I, I thought that was really interesting that a functional medicine practitioner even went that direction. You know, there's the data that shows this, that, and the other, but it's, yeah, it's it so just what? provides some numbers. I but it's so in the what? context yeah. of, of the whole thing. And yeah. again, she said because the, yeah. she wanted to see if improving that had an effect on the hormones. Now, Dr. Tina and Dr. Lauren would say- Start dosing her small. No, right? yeah, you got to do that anyway, which- yeah. I'm starting more and more to, to, to think that that's a, a good option for a lot of people, especially if you're fit and healthy, Yeah, uh, just for improvement in, in quality of HRV life. HRV fluctuates so much. I actually, I, I liked um, DeFranco's method yes. a lot more with the grip testing yes. before workouts. That was great. That works a lot. Our next caller is Aaron from Canada. Hi, Aaron. How can we help you? Hi there. Um, so I got braces on just very recently and discovered that when you get braces on you can't actually chew your food mm -hmm. and so 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 i like to eat and i eat a lot and i'm trying to <laughs> keep enough protein in keep enough nutrients in to have energy to do the things i like to do but i can't chew food and so i'm not ready yet to blend steak and to put my food into a blender and so i've been putting protein powder in everything. So I've been eating yogurt and cottage cheese and oatmeal and things like that and sticking a scoop of protein powder in whatever I can. But the question is like, is there a limit on how much protein powder? Like I recognize I should be eating whole foods, but um, so part of the question too is I work um, in a remote mine site. So I'm away from home two weeks at a time. So I have zero say in my food choices for two weeks of the month. Then the other two weeks I can go home and kind of um, tailor what I eat. But for the first two weeks I'm here and I'm actually here now. And I flew up the day after I got the braces before I realized I couldn't chew. Like it was a novelty that I figured I couldn't whistle, but then I discovered I <laughs> couldn't chew. Yeah. And so that became a bit of a bigger concern. And so, yeah, the cottage cheese is going to get tiring, but I don't know, is there a limit to the protein powder I can eat? How's, no. how's your, how's your yeah, yeah, yeah. digestion? Are you, uh, are you okay? Very you're, good. Okay. So you're if you're, if you're yeah. fine, you're fine. Yeah. And this is a, this is a, a small period of time in your life. Um, I have some things that will uh, potentially help too. I don't know if you've tried to crock pot like chicken thighs, but if you crock pot the chicken thighs, it like like melt, it like falls apart. It's so soft. I, yeah, I'll be able to do that when I go home. It's my two weeks. Oh, like I yeah. I go into the cafeteria and I get food, and then I play. Yeah. What can Good I eggs? eat? What can't yeah. I eat tonight? Yeah, so I wouldn't worry about the protein powder. You're yeah. It's especially since you're acclimating to your braces. Yeah. Your, it's, di your digestion is going to be what tells you if you're having yes. too much or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was why I asked that first is if your digestion is fine, mm -hmm. you're fine. You're going to yep. be okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> in in the context of you being able to build some muscle, burn body fat, be healthy for the time being, it's totally fine. Totally fine. Obviously, we'd like to yeah. get to a place where you're eating whole foods, but 
You know, this yeah. is a short period of time in your life where they, they really hurt and they're probably, it'll get better. Like yeah. I remember, I mean, I had braces too. I remember the beginning. It was, it really sucks. My son just went yeah, to this. Funny. Yeah, they're, they're, this is just like step one. I actually have to have quite a bit of work done. And so it's going to be a while for this. Yeah. Is there any other supplements you recommend? I'm taking during this time like is there anything else i should be possibly taking? eaas i mean so, essential amino acids okay. but if you're getting enough protein you're okay yeah. uh multivitamin but no no nothing else it'd be okay. good to have the eaas on guard like that's yeah. kind of how i use them right now because i you know i know i've been missing and i just keep them i keep them uh in my backpack here at work i have them by my side mm -hmm. i like the pill form it's easier for me just to swallow the pills real quick and if it's a low protein day i'm taking it two or three times if it's okay. uh, if I'm hitting my target, I'm probably taking it one time. If I'm above my target, I'm not worried about it. That's kind of how I look at it. It's like I'm going to keep okay. them by my side. If I know it's low, I'm trying to use them two or three times. If I'm barely hitting it, I'm probably taking it one or one time. If I'm not, if I'm over hitting it, I'm not worrying about it. That's kind of how I, that's how I use them. Okay. Hey. All right. I think other than that, you're doing really good. Yeah, you're good. Hang in there, though. It'll it, it, hang in there. It'll be it'll get better. Yes. I feel far too old for this, but it's you know it's yeah. the thing you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome, it's frustrating. It's well, no, all, thanks for calling in. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Are you follow? Are you following one of the maps programs right now? What are you doing workout wise? Um, so I have again because I live two very different lifestyles: yeah. home lifestyle and here. So when I'm here, um, I have we have quite a good gym. Um. I bought your anabolic program. I haven't started it yet because I'm still finishing um, a program that I'm sort of working on through an app. Um, but yeah, I've been lifting weights for about four years now with intention and it's seen lots of changes and then started listening to your program and it changed a lot of the things. There's been a lot of listeners that I've, that have called in with things that have resonated like the overworking out. Mm. Um, I like to go six days a week. I like to go seven days a week, but um listening to you guys in your program has really helped sort of change a lot of views um on a lot of sort of debunked a lot of the things that i thought about working out so anabolics on my program um to start perfect. i think later this fall once i'm done this that's great perfect that's great what uh, what app just out of curiosity are you using um what's it called it's called a uh, ladder ladder okay. okay cool awesome yeah awesome all right, Aaron. Well, let us know. I, I'd love to hear your results after you go through anabolic, especially since you've been listening for a while now. And then uh love to hear you circle back and let us know how that goes for you. Thank you. All you right. got it. All right, Aaron. Ready. Thank you. Yeah, I think sometimes we get when we give the message of Whole Foods, uh, people might get a little, you know. Yeah, stuck on that. Zealot with it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like in a case like hers. First of all, there is no limit yeah. to protein except for the, what your digestive system. That's everything. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, some people, you know, more than two shakes a day or one shake a day and they start to get gastro issues. But if not. I think the totally message fine. I've always tried to commit, co communicate to my clients was that it's um, it's not bad, but it, it, we always want to be trying to That's get right. it all through Whole Foods. The reality is I use shakes almost daily. Okay. All the time. But I'm, but I, what I'm telling myself in my head is just that I, I want to be better tomorrow. I'm going to try and get all yeah. through Whole Foods, but I'm also not beating myself up, going like, "Oh, I failed. I had a protein shake." Right. It's like, no, it was a, it was a good choice. It was, and you needed to hit your protein intake, That's so it. it's totally fine. It's early access to Black Friday, all Maps programs, all bundles, sixty percent off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get ten entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right. Back to the show. Our next caller is Kevin from Nevada. What's up, Kevin? Yo, Kevin. What's going on, Kevin? Hey, guys. Hey, I um, just want to say thank you guys for picking up this question. This is like a pivot off of the last time you guys had me on here. Um, I think Adam, I don't know if you guys remember, I'm like that guy that 27 years old, I never did any training. And then until you guys literally finally did some training and then um, found out, you know, strength was kind of my go-to in weight training. I now uh, actually use your advice item and signed up for a powerlifting meet. Sadly, I couldn't get one like mid mid like way this year in June because I had to be qualified for it. So I have one up in December. 
um, which leads me to this question. Exciting. Let's hear it. Yeah, buddy. Um, So uh, because I had my meet coming up in December 7, um, I already ran MAPS Powerlift the first time, uh, started it in June. Um, The goals that I had, I actually hit. um, And my original question was, is running it back to back a smart thing to do rather than what I was initially going to do is do power lift and then try a different like power lifting program from, you know, someone else. And I, I was just thinking that just because I didn't think or know if there's any so uh, this, good thing this, that comes from doing it back to back. This is a cool question because uh, novelty when ch- recomping, changing body composition becomes more important than when trying to get better at a skill. Yeah. So in this case, actually running it back to back would actually serve you really well. Like if I, if like, if you hired me to like, Oh, let's change our body fat percentage or the way we look Mm -hmm. the most, like chasing novelty becomes more important than if you said, Adam, I want to be really Mm -hmm. good at the squat, the bench and the deadlift and lift as much weight as we can. We're it'll actually serve us to run the program back to back like that. Now, the only uh, example where that may not be true is if you are or you're suffering from like achy joints or overtrain and your your body's talking to you going like right. oh I'm regressing because I'm hurting or and I'm and I'm not addressing mobility and stuff like that then I might interrupt it with a, another program like symmetry, symmetry yeah. or just taking a break off or doing some things to deload but so long as you feel good um, running it back to back is a great idea yeah during that uh, during that three week. Uh, gap. Um, I would go low intensity. You just came out of mass power lift and I would focus on mobility and then jump right, right back in. You'd be great. Perfect. And, and actually it's kind of crazy how this all worked. So um, because of the timing, I actually did already, I, I did very similar to what you just said, Adam. Um, okay. So in between the three week break I had, um, I took a deload of like literally a week of nothing. Okay. Um, hearing you guys and understanding that strength is not going to go away doing that, um, I found that super helpful. Then I did sled work, you know, lateral work, like good. what you just said, Sal. Um, yeah, good. And a lot of band work, and and my body felt fresh when I ran it again. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so really I'm good. now in like phase uh, two of power lift. So so far, I'm I'm pretty excited because I, I just even though I'm like a beginner and I should have fun, I I want to steal first place like. Yeah. It'd be pretty sick to do that, bro. At one forty-eight, um, you're ripping four hundred five. Well, that's the goal. On squat, or is that where you're? Where are you at right now? Well, that was originally the goal. So after I ran uh, powerlift the first time, I did it at like all as a you know you guys know RPE. Yeah. Um. So I did it at like a RPE eight for everything, even the max out, and I hit a uh, four hundred five squat, two hundred bench, and four hundred five deadlift. Yeah, you're great, bro. Yeah, bro. That's yeah. strong good. as fuck. Is and his weight class is one forty-eight. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> that's Thank awesome. You guys. Yeah. So we're done I, I giving mean, you advice, dog. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're done. Giving so, you <laughs> um I pretty much wanted to do it like what you said, and, and now I am running maps powerlift again because I'm now kind of using the metrics of how I felt to kind of compare it to how I feel week to week on this last run before I compete. Um, but here's the new question I have, and I think this might it's a super simple question, but um I'm kind of scared of what the answer might be. Uh is there, everybody keeps telling me like, you know, these, I'm just having newbie gains. So like these newbie gains of strength is going to fall off like eventually soon. Um, <laughs> or they're kind of telling me, you know, I'm right now I'm 31 years old. I'm new to this. I'm competing against guys that are even like, even though they're only 27, they've been doing this for like eight years yeah. of their life. Yeah. Um, am I kind of chasing a, a ghost no. or chasing a, are these uh, competitors telling you that? Uh, some of them are comp- some of them power lift. I don't. They tell me they power lift. So I don't know how serious they are. Um, I mean, some of them ha- have seen me on social media and like just found a video I did, and then they just would DM me. Yeah, some um, haters. Yeah, Kevin, exactly. Kevin who, who cares? <laughs> who cares? I mean, yeah. are, are you going to be a power lifter? Is that your career? Did you quit your job? Not going to school? You're going to just do this? No, no, no. You're no. fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. If yeah. you if you like quit everything, like I'm going to make money power lifting. No. First of all, I would tell even the best power lifters not to do that. Not yeah. a great way to. But no, you're fine, dude. Just keep going. And at your age, I mean, some of the top yeah, you get people plenty don't, left in of juice. Oh yeah, you, people tend to get their strongest like 40, uh, towards bro. their mid yeah. mid to late thirties, early forties. Oh okay, all yeah. right. You got a long way to. You yeah, got you're a, good, bro. You got a long way to. Now, 
I would expect it to slow up because it looks like you have. I mean, since the last time we talked, to where you're at already is you're getting some crazy numbers. It's yeah. incredibly. I mean, impressive. you may need to put more work in, but it's still going to keep going up. If you yep. get everything right. Yeah. Yep. Exciting yeah, to see. I, I, I am. Uh, thank you guys for that answer too. Um, that makes me feel better because I just want to. I want to like push it because you know it's just something Let that. Me let me ask you this, Kevin. At the beginning sure. of Maps Power Lift, where were your lifts, and then and then and then again, give us the numbers at the end. I, I want to see what you progressed uh, so through. It. In, in June, it was a three seventy five squat, two uh, one eighty five bench, and uh, three ninety five deadlift. And then in I finished in August, or uh, I think it was in August, and I hit four hundred five squat. Uh, 200 bench and 405 deadlift. Nice, dude. Yeah. Everything um, went up significantly. That's, that's great. great. Yeah. And, and so far with, you know, you guys have the calculator in there. So I'm kind of, I can kind of see what the guesstimate might be for the meet. So I'm looking at hopefully 450 plus on squat and deadlift and then 225 bench yeah. um, based on how everything's running. Damn. Uh, Pretty so realistic far, so. considering what you've done. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. Good job. Will that, yeah, will, that yeah. put you, will that put you in the top top three? Uh, my friend told me that actually does compete, compete. Yeah, top three. Unless there's like a guy that he hasn't seen yet that's going to sign up and just like destroy me. But hmm. so far, um, I just want to be this like newbie that's a dad and never found this thing. And then all of a sudden it's a steal for, for you. I love, I love that. Yeah. Stomp him. I love that. You training naturally? Naturally, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Definitely. Yeah, don't go to the dark side. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no you yeah. are. That's incredible, bro. No, thank you guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, those were my questions. It's pretty quick. Now, one thing I wanted to see, uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember me from last time, but again, I'm 31. So I never did any of this stuff until I was 27. Never even knew strength training until 27. Um, I don't know if, can, can you guys see my, that video attachment I sent over? With your kids? Yes. Yes, we saw. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> oh, you saw it? Yeah, yes. I love it. I you guys are just like, so of course, I'm not going to give a long spiel of thank you, but not only impacting me, um, my wife's 33, never did any training, like nothing. Um, she feels great because you guys gave Map Starter to me last time I was on here. Uh, she feels amazing already after doing it for like two months. And then now my kids are just randomly, we're not telling them to do this stuff, but you guys saw, like they're now, they want to deadlift. They want to so, do all these yeah, planks. Dude. That's the way stuff. you do it too, bro. Just like that. Good you job, know, man. You got to tell them they just see mom and dad doing it and they want to, that's, that's the way you lead, bro. Yeah. So I, again, I, I'm glad you guys were able to see that. I just want to say thank you because the impact isn't only to me. It's now my kids and I can't wait to see how this is going to end up later. Um, going to be like Justin's kids. I, I hear. <laughs> Kevin, where you, remind yeah. me where you're based out of, where are you at again? Las Vegas. Okay, Las Vegas. If you're ever in the Bay Area, hit us up. You come watch a live show. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, right. thank you, Adam. All I right. appreciate it. Yeah, just reach out. That's if you guys awesome. ever fly into San Jose or whatever, that, reach out to us and we'll have you come yeah. uh, come watch a live recording. Say show hi. us the first place trophy. Yeah, yeah. Go oh, man, I'm, I'm going to steal it. I'm going to rep you guys however way I can. I was like going to put you guys on like a belt if there was like a sticker or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Do right it. On. Right, right on, Kevin. All right, man. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. He's strong. Fucking he's, really he's bro, he's 148 pounds. I know. Hitting, hitting weights I can't hit right now. That's great, dude. <laughs> That's like, great. I love I love stories like that. He he didn't work oh, out, didn't even know strength what a training great, existed. And even better, the fact that he got wife involved, the kids now see him doing it. I mean, this is really what it's about. I mean, his strength stuff is incredible, but I mean the fact that it's you can tell it's completely it's a, yeah, it's a lifestyle thing. Yeah, now. reshaped awesome. him and his family and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's, uh, it's incredible, man. I love that. Our next caller is Anano from Georgia. Anano. Hello. How you doing? Uh, hi guys, how are you? Good, Good. how are you? How are you doing? Uh, I'm very nervous. It's my third time on the show, but it never gets old. I feel like <laughs> I will forget all the English I know. So forgive me if I make any mistakes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I will just read out my email. Uh, I sent this in June, uh, but it's pretty much um, uh, relatable even now because nothing has changed since since then. Uh, so when I wrote this to you, I said that I'm a very new BCPT, um, and I have also purchased your guys's, um, my Plum trainer course, uh, and I'm in the forum as well. Uh, so, uh, back then I was watching a video about assessments on the floor where you were guys talking about how showing the correct ways to move to the client and asking them if they feel the difference from their natural way of moving. And in those uh, case scenarios, the majority of the clients would say, yes, they feel the change and they feel their muscles working. 
from the wrong way, right? Uh, but here's my question. What do we do when the client says they do not feel the difference? Like I have a friend who I was training back then and I had uh, come across this issue multiple times with her. Uh, for example, when I would correct her form, she did not feel or know the difference from her original way of moving. And when I would tell her to, for example, bend her knees or not bend her knees that much, she would say that she doesn't realize that she's bending them or so on. Uh, when I would ask her to flex or brace her uh, core, she would say she does not know how to do it. And even like when I would say like squeeze, she doesn't know what it means, uh, how to squeeze a muscle and she does not feel anything. So I was very confused uh, because I didn't know and I still don't know if it's like my issue that I don't communicate it well with her or if I'm dealing with something else. Uh, for the majority of involuntary deviations she did during the movement, she said that she didn't know that she was moving in a wrong way and that she did, didn't mean to, uh, following up with saying that she didn't know how to intentionally move in a certain way. It had been very challenging to get her to move closer to the right technique or um, like right form. Uh, as for the most part, when I would give her corrections, she would answer that she does not know what she's doing wrong or like how to fix it. Uh, I'm worried that I might come across such a thing in the future as well with a client, not a friend, and that I will not be able to handle this situation really well. I would appreciate any tips you can give me. Yeah, yeah, I, here's why I love this question. Yeah. Now, what you're saying isn't super common, but it's common enough to if you train Oh, you'll people for five to 10 years, yeah. you'll see this. Like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell, I mean, uh, you know, I would have clients do an exercise like a <laughs> tricep press down. Yeah, perfect form. And they would get, you know, <laughs> get to like rep number 10 and they're struggling. They say, where am I supposed to feel this? Yeah. Right? People would ask that. Like, where, yeah. And I'd be like, what do you mean? Where are you supposed to feel this? So people are so disconnected yeah, from their bodies of their body. that they just don't, uh, they, they have no connection. It's all, it's as if it's if almost like it's numb. It's not numb, but they don't have a connection to what's happening. Over time, they will start to feel things and they will start to connect to things. So the way to, to, to tackle this is to set yourself up properly. So what I would do is I'd say, I'm going to correct your technique right now. Now, most people will notice that they're going to feel it here. Sometimes people don't feel anything. And that's just because they're they need to get into their bodies more, which is what we're going to work on. Let me know if you notice anything. So that sets them up for either they'll feel it or they won't. And they'll be like, okay, well, I don't feel it. What does that mean? Well, you're probably not in your body as much as we'd like, but that's okay because through training and through, you know, through practice, you will be able to start to feel the areas that you need to feel. Now, the other uh, aspect of this is just cueing, right? You mentioned yeah. bracing your core. I remember mm -hmm. having a struggle with that too. I'd tell people like, brace your core, tense your abs. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then I had a trainer come up to me and say, tell them you're going to poke them yeah, in the I'm stomach. Punch your stomach. Yeah. And yeah. so you go to poke them in the stomach and uh, they tighten up right away and you go, okay, that's bracing. Yeah. Uh, I actually heard this analogy on one of your episodes and I tried it and she says like, I don't have any reaction about poking. <laughs> so I don't know what it is. So you know what you do? You just so haul, I don't know what haul off feel. and punch you your stomach. Faints. No, <laughs> you know what? Yes, no, no. I even <laughs> so, so I've had clients like this that are so, yeah, disconnected yeah. I, I and she's stuff. like she's not ticklish uh, she doesn't like um brace her core when she laughs because she doesn't laugh that much and it's like i don't know like <laughs> you have to in teach what her. way to approach this it's practice yeah. and you're yeah. going to teach her to be in her body i would start back every presses, workout with her back with, presses help well yeah and i would start every workout with belly breathing yeah i would do uh -oh. five okay. minutes of deep belly breathing and don't be alarmed if she gets emotional uh in teary while while, while happening because when you take someone that's that, that disconnected from their body, which I've had plenty of those clients, when they well, start to feel their body, they start to feel a lot of Yeah, things. that, and then when you actually get into the exercise, the workouts, you're going to take your sweet time, like super slow. Mm -hmm. So that way too, you can kind of walk around and make little micro adjustments with her posture. Uh, if she's comfortable with it, you can actually kind of poke and prod and, and, and at least try to kind of stimulate a little bit of uh, sensation there. So that way it kind of directs her attention. Like this muscle here, we should feel a little bit, uh, you know, of activity. Um, and then, you know, and the, like isometrics are amazing That's for this. Go. Um, and so like, especially with cables, it's it, it, with core, it's easy to, to kind of hold them in a position where it's pulling against them, but they have to hold it 
uh, in place. And then, you know, to be able to do that and then also try and cue and, and make sure like everything in her posture is, is yeah, holding up. Right. So this is the direction I was going to go. Uh, and I think core is one of the most difficult. Justin already hit it on the head. There's two things I either do. I either do the back presses where I lay them flat on the back. I tell them to push their back against the ground in order to do that. They have to engage their core and then I'll, t I'll touch their core and be like, that's your core activating right yeah. now that's one way the other way is what justin is saying is you have somebody you can even you don't even need a machine you can actually have them hold their hands out straight together like yeah. this yeah, and yeah. then you push against them and you say fight that Resist don't let it. Don't, don't let your don't let the arms move and then they have to let they have to work their core to stabilize that and then you see feel your abs tensing up that's your core lighting up so that's that way and i would do that for all the muscles so if the, if a client can't feel it in their back I would get them in a row position and then hold real lightweight so they don't need hardly any weight. Squeeze your back. And then I'd come back and I'd touch their back. I, I would touch the, the rhomboids. I'd touch the lats and be like, this is where mm -hmm. you want to feel it. And I would be and touching them it. and hold it, squeeze, hold it. And then practicing an isometric hold for every muscle and, po and, and poking at where you want them to feel it. That helps make the connection. Yeah. But Sal's right. Like some people, it would be so crazy. I would be doing like, they'd be doing perfect form. They would do it and you'd even seem struggle it and you'd be like, oh, did you feel that? And they're like, uh, where was I supposed to feel it? And you're like, are you serious? You didn't feel oblivious. that there? Oblivious, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 There's, <laughs> exactly. There's a yeah. disassociation that happens sometimes with people who are just- uh, Disconnected. For, for, for whatever reason, uh, disconnected from their own bodies. And so I, 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 belly breathing, it was a, a, a powerful tool that I learned how to use later in my career. Yeah. And there were some clients like that where we would start the workout, we'd lay down on our back, I'd have them place a hand on their belly, a hand on their chest. I'd have them breathe deep into their belly, make sure that the belly rises first before the chest, hold the breath at the top for three seconds, release, and repeat that. And that helped them get into their bodies. Oftentimes, they're too tense. They don't even realize it. They're under lots of stress, whatever the case may be. That belly breathing oftentimes would, would do the trick. I believe we did a good video on Mind Pump TV with Stephanie on belly breathing. Is that correct? Maybe. I think so. If you go to our Mind Pump TV, look up teaching belly breathing on Mind Pump TV. Doug will I, look it up I right believe, now. I it. believe it was Stephanie who we had in here, and she taught belly breathing. So go through how she teaches, because I think uh, the way you cue yeah. belly breathing is even important. Um, is that right, mm -hmm. Doug? Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Um, I'm not seeing that offhand. I see some stomach vacuums, uh, but not belly breathing. Wasn't okay. belly breathing by Stephanie? Uh, uh, let me check. Come in Salemi, but yeah, Stephanie was another mm -hmm. good one. But I mean, literally, you, you lay on your back, one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, breathe in really deep. Your belly rises first and fills up first before the chest. Hold that, release, and then repeat that. And what you'll find oftentimes with people who aren't in their body is their chest will rise, but their belly won't. Uh, and so they have to really concentrate on getting that full diaphragmatic breath. And that tends to put people in their body. Oh, Ben Polk did one. All right. Yep. Oh, okay. So that's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so since you're much. A trainer, like, it really helped. Since you're in our course, yeah. do you have Prime Pro? Uh, that's always valuable for trainers. Uh, I do actually. I have like 14 of your programs oh, plus mods plus free guides plus. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What else was there? <laughs> yeah. All right. So Good. I try to like support you guys in that way. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you're a you trainer. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help and everything you guys do. You got it. Thanks you're so awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you remember? how weird that was yeah, the first yeah. time you encountered <laughs> yeah. that that was just it was one of those things where i almost had like a short go off in my brain i'm just yeah. like why can't you move this way like yeah. it just didn't or what do you mean you can't feel sense. this we literally just worked yeah, your you quads. Feel, like why are you feeling it on your back it's not <laughs> it's not understand. super common but it actually happened quite it's a common bit. enough yeah it's common it. enough to yeah. where I, I it happened enough times that i figured out how to solve it you know what i'm saying like isometrics were key like this is so i actually get this sometimes when i'm helping coaches online really hard really really hard this is a great example of yeah. like where in-person training really i mean this is hard in person and then you kind of i can't imagine doing this in yeah person. can you imagine trying to cue somebody over the over the computer or the phone and and, uh, and explain it and you can't yeah. touch yeah. or do help them with the it isometric always seemed like a huge challenge for online training huge yeah. huge so uh but yeah the getting them in an isometric position holding and tensing up that position that they're supposed to and then touching the muscle that's supposed to be engaging had, really helps i had one lady yeah. that was like this and uh this is the first time i was advised to try belly breathing from somebody that was in my my studio and uh so we did we went in this front office it was dark i had her belly breathe and three minutes into it she started sobbing crying, crying. and i remember being like oh 
what do I do? And I'm just crying. <laughs> what happened? Get another pillow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you know, my, this, was, this wasn't in my certification and my, course. My, you know, my, <laughs> my train me for this. Yeah. And then I was informed like that can happen because they're so disconnected. They start mm-hmm. to feel and they start to feel a lot of things. It's like oh, isn't the, the isn't the prevailing theory on that uh, connected to how they say we store a lot of our emotions and feelings in our in our in our body? If you dis- if you disconnect so strongly from yeah. your from bad or scary feelings or stressful feelings, you disconnect from everything. everything. So you're just not feeling whatever overwhelm or stress is there. When you put yourself in your body, well, now you feel, uh-huh. and then you feel stuff, uh, and that's when it starts to come out. This is the theory. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher.